All right, welcome everyone to episode five, Figuring Out Fatherhood. Today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on my good friend raising an interracial, is that, is that the correct term? Mixed race. Child. Welcome, this is Adam. Thanks for having me. Of course, introduce yourself, your name, what do you do? Um, yeah, my name's Adam, uh, Adam Pugh. Uh, I am an anti-racism campaigner. Uh, I have a son who's three and a half, since before. Um, yeah, that's me. What's your son's name? My son's name's Ezra. And give us a bit of background. So obviously, without saying obvious, you're white. Yeah. And his mum is? So his mum is mixed black, uh, Cuban and Jamaican. Okay. So my first question for you is obviously, you're well aware that as people grow up, mixed race children especially, they tend to identify as black. Mm. How does that make you feel? Um, I think more than anything, it, it, um, for me as a, as a white guy, raising an, an interracial child is about reflecting on how I'm going to be equipped mm -hmm. um, to shepherd him and guide him through the challenges that he's going to face mm -hmm. in terms of his ad own identity as he grows up because that isn't my experience yeah and I think that um, you know when he steps out into the world whiteness is normalized and that's that's the standard right so I don't feel like I, I necessarily have to emphasize that aspect of his, mm -hmm. his heritage or his background um, so I, I understand why um, why some people identify that way and that doesn't bother me, that's, that's fine. Okay, that's fair, but seeing as he's that, I feel like it puts him in a bit of an interesting position because say he came home one day and he was just like, people, unfortunately, that looked like you, mm. made him feel some kind of way like he experienced racism or maybe got called the N-word. How would you respond? How would you react to that happening to your son? Yeah, it's a really interesting question. Um, I guess it's one that I, I spend quite a lot of time reflecting on and mm -hmm. thinking about. Um, and the reality is, is that as a as a mixed race child, no matter how you know, no matter how light his skin might be, or no matter what texture his hair might be, he's still going to be otherized, and mm -hmm. he's still gonna um, he's still gonna experience that. Um, obviously, the thought of that happening to your child or anyone mm -hmm. that you love or care about is is um, is upsetting, and is something that um, that I'm not particularly happy about. Um, and that's, that's something that we'll have to, I guess, manage and, and talk through as, as that happens. But really it's about um, how do I support him and be there for him mm -hmm. as he experiences that and um, support him for that process. Yeah, but I felt like it was very important to point out the fact that it's going to be people that look like you. So what if he's like, he doesn't feel comfortable talking to you about that? If that so, makes sense. So yeah. It's unfortunate if that mm. could possibly happen, yeah, but yeah, yeah. how would that make you feel that your son can't come and talk to you about something that's happened to him? Do you see what I mean? What's the middle ground? You know what, I, I feel guess. like a lot, a lot of this in fatherhood is it's not about me. So, yeah. so he doesn't mm -hmm. exist for me. He's yeah. not here to, to make me happy. And my feelings and my emotions mm -hmm. are not paramount. I mean, that's not the number one priority. So really it's about him and his feelings and the fact that he feels supported. And if, if, if I'm not able to provide that for him or if he mm -hmm. doesn't feel able to, hopefully, I mean, we'll be able to navigate that. But yeah, if we can't, it's really important that there are things in place so that he's not missing out and he does feel that support. So part of that is, you know, like I'm not raising him in isolation on mm -hmm. my own. I mean, it's been really important to have other people around, people that look like him, black men, black women, yeah. um, you know, godparents, people that can, can be there for him as examples and as role models, but also able to pour into his life and support him in that way. And hopefully just through, I guess, that having that network of people around, um, you know, he'll feel supported through them as well as through me. Okay, that's good to know. So now I want to focus more about you. So, I guess, is it safe to assume that you were dating his mum? Yeah, yeah. Okay. How are you looked at while you were dating his mum? For example, like, while she was pregnant and all that stuff. Because like, obviously you knew, and everyone knew that she would have a mixed child. Did people look at you differently? Would treat you differently? Or her? How was that, the whole process from then to now, I guess? Yeah, I think um, like interracial, interracial relationships and dating interracial is an interesting one anyway and you're always going to get looks Yeah. Um, and I think that that's something that I'm kind of used to and I think she was used to as well so okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily a problem. Um, on the whole, I think because of, of the dynamics and because mm -hmm. of the fact that I'm, I'm a white guy, had I been a white woman yeah. um, or it been the dynamics were different, it might have been different but for me um, you would you notice people looking. Mm -hmm. It tends to be um, older people, I mean, older white people, yeah. kind of stare or scrub their face or whatever. Um, 
but do you know what I mean I'm not I'm not here yeah. to, to appease everyone else. It's more about um, how my partner feels in that situation mm-hmm. and how yeah. do you know I mean making sure that she's safe and that she's protected and that you're not do you know what I mean bringing her into a place where she's going to be vulnerable, or so yeah. that, um, abuse and that kind of stuff. Okay, because I asked that because what I'm hoping for this <coughs> is to come up is basically anyone who's going to go through something similar to you for them to know what to expect mm-hmm. and how to react, and it seems like you obviously handle it quite well. So. My next question for you is, um, when you're out with your son, mm-hmm. being a white dad in the church town, again, do you get treated differently? Do you get looked at differently? How does it make you, do you, do you feel some type of way knowing that your son's going to have to navigate through this world that mm-hmm. looks at you different just because he's got a white father? So I haven't, I haven't necessarily noticed that, um, that I've been treated differently mm-hmm. when we're out together. So, you know, most of the time when we're out together, it is him and I. Okay. Um, and it differs from where we are, right? So like I found, um, my time in North London um, was very different to, to being in, in South London. In South London, if I walked down the street with him, people would just stop me all the time and just like, it's really nice to see a, a guy walking okay. down the street with his son. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't, I haven't necessarily experienced that. I have had some negative experiences. I mean, I remember when he, was, when he was newborn, I was at an event with a friend of mine who's from Sierra Leone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, dark skinned black woman for all anybody knew that could have been his mum, mm-hmm. it wasn't, but it could have been. And then um, this white woman came up to us and you know, looked in the buggy and was like, Oh my god, you know, your son's got a perfect complexion and his hair is so beautiful. And it was like such an offensive thing to be saying, especially in front of this um, dark skinned black woman. Um, so there's situations like that that arise, um, and those kind of microaggressions that you're faced with. But you just have to be prepared for it and you just have to like i think you need to consider these things that mm-hmm. like, before you enter into those relationships especially yep. before you think about bringing a child into the world mm-hmm. right because so many people do it and they don't consider the implications of the child and what the child is going to face or give any kind of thought to that and um, so i think it's really important to just be to just be prepared yeah you mentioned something that you mentioned something just quite recently about how they need to think long term about how the child will feel when they go through that. So do you feel like that's something not lot, not enough people do? Because a lot of people they bring children into the world. It's like, oh my god, perfect eyes. Oh my god, the hair, everything perfect. But they don't think of everything else that comes with it. So what would you advise them like just to think about it? What else is there? Just to avoid it if possible. And it's a bit it's a bit harsh to say, but if no one's take the good with the bad, then in my opinion, just. Don't get in the I think people fetishize mixed race children mm-hmm. um, as, as much as they fetishize mixed race relationships or interracial relationships. And the reality is, is that those relationships are hard, right? Um, they're, they're complex and they're complicated. Um, and if you're, if you're doing it for those reasons that you're mm-hmm. talking about, or because you've got this really weird idea that having a mixed race child is somehow the cure for racism and that's going to make the world a better place, do you know what I mean? Don't mm-hmm. bring a child into this world. That's not, that's not helpful. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if that answers your question, but... Somewhat, I can't remember what I asked you, to be honest, but mm. yeah, it's good. But yeah, I'm enjoying this conversation. So, I guess, for you, would you do it again? And this is a weird question, but um, is it your preference, black women? Like, would you... Mm. Is that your preference, basically? No, I wouldn't say it's my preference. Yeah. So I think I um, sometimes feel like my dating pool is quite shallow, mm. just in terms of, like, who, who I am and what I do, right? Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I would, you know, I'm, I'm open to dating all races of women, but I do. I also appreciate yeah. it because of what I do. Yeah. Most, you know, the majority of white women might look at me, mm-hmm. and or there might be a physical attraction, but the minute they find out what I'm about and what I do, yeah. and they realise can't necessarily bring me home to mum or dad, or yeah. I mean, their grandma might say something wild, and, and I'm going to be calling them out. Um, that that kind of makes things complicated. So no, it's definitely not my my preference. Um, but I guess in terms of like proximity and spaces yeah. that I'm in, that's something I'm, I'm often exposed to. Okay. Would I do it again? Um, I, I don't know that I would, I don't know that I would have more mm. children anyway. Um, it's something that I would be open to, mm. I wouldn't, I, you know, I, I'm not like, I want to have another mm. mixed race child. Um, if I meet someone that is of a different race and we fall in love and that's what we decide that we're going to do. But I think I would want to go into that with both of our eyes wide open and given a lot more kind of yeah. thought and consideration, even than I did. I mean, coming into like when I had Ed, so I, don't, I think there were a lot of things that I didn't necessarily really consider. Um, yeah, that's why that's you actually saw that's the question I was going to ask you next. Do you know what I should have in the first place? Because obviously, if your preference is black women, 
chances are your next child will be in a trace again. So I guess I was going to ask you, how has having Ezra impacted your long term thinking in that sense? Because you say you don't know you're going to have kids again. If you mm. decide you want to, but decide you are going to have kids, what would you do differently? But you kind of answer that actually. Anyway, so like my, my main priority as a dad is creating like a happy, healthy home mm-hmm. for my son, right? Um, and also like just being able to model a healthy example of what a loving, intimate relationship looks like for him that I never had growing up. Um, and if children is a, is a, more children is a part of that, then great, wonderful. Um, but even just things like how are you going to, conversations like how are you going to raise that child? Like did, what are your approaches to mm-hmm. discipline? And that, I mean, that's irrespective of the race of your partner but just really making sure that you're you're both in line with mm-hmm. all of those things because it just makes life super challenging. Um, and I guess talking about those dynamics, knowing you know I mean, like what, what that child is going to be subjected to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even if, you know, for example, if I decided to, to be with a white woman and we brought another child into the world, there's a, there's, a, there's a whole other dynamic to that in terms of now Ezra becomes the odd one out in that oh, yeah, scenario, course, right? Yeah. How is that going to make him feel? It's, it's just thinking about all of those things and how we're going to, how mm. we're going to deal with that. That's a good point you made. Mm. But yeah, um, thank you. All right, so you just touched on you mentioned discipline. How did you? So I'm assuming it's something you discuss with Ezra's mum. How do you plan on? What's your methods of discipline? Because I'm sure you can appreciate the fact that's going to be different mm. from your perspective and her perspective. How do you come, how do you find common ground? Especially when you're not together. Mm. How do you find common ground? How do you, how, how do you approach discipline? Granted, he's still quite young, so you haven't had to do as much yet, but what's your going to approach to that? So, you know, with Ez, it's about continuity. So it's about, mm-hmm. I guess, trying to support each other um, yeah. and figure out what, what's, like, what, what approach we're going to take. And sometimes that's hard, like, especially mm-hmm. if you're in a co-parenting relationship where you're not together or you don't see eye to eye. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm from, it's just me, I don't have any siblings. Okay. Whereas she's one of six. So our approach to parenting when Ez was first born was very different, right? Um, I'm thinking, you know, like when he was born, any time that he would cry, you know, she would go run into him and, and pick him up to, mm-hmm. to give him comfort. And I didn't necessarily have that approach um, because I kind of felt like, well, if I know that he's fed and he's clean and he's loved and he's got everything that he needs, you know, babies cry, that's what they do. Like my, my role as a parent isn't mm-hmm. just to keep his child quiet at all times. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that initially that kind of created some tension because it was like, well, you know, why, why are you not kind of being as, as attentive as I yeah. am? Um, so uh, it's just like it's just having those conversations like moving forward if i was having more children i think it would just be like before making a decision to have that child it would just be understanding like, what is your your parenting technique like what is your attitude toward discipline whether that's physical discipline mm-hmm. like is that something that you're for or against um and that journey, like, is that something that we can compromise and find mm-hmm. more or not like a lot of relationships are about compromise right it's so you reckon about, more people should discuss these things before they I f- get yeah, I, I mean, I feel like it would. I like my situation would have been a lot easier mm-hmm. had we spoken about these things and considered these things before. Of course, and I feel like a lot of people go into go into parenting without giving any of this stuff any consideration. Mm-hmm. But there's no manual for parenting, right? Like no. we're all just trying to figure it out and do the best as we can. Um, but you know, the more that you can prepare and, and at least be thinking about these things and making sure that you're on the same page with one another, then the smoother it's going to be. Sorry, so you wanted to mention something else? Do you mind touching on that? We were just talking about like raising yeah. children in community, right? And, and having that, that support network around, specifically for him as a, a child of mixed heritage, right? So, um, you know, we're, we're both a part of a, a, you know, a WhatsApp group um, of fathers that are able oh, to yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. provide support for one another. And, and the majority of those, those fathers are black. Um, same thing with like, you know, shout out Marvin and the Dope Black Dads mm-hmm. Network. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're really amazing and they've created uh, another space called The Village, which is, I guess, looking kind of beyond Dope Black Fathers and kind of bringing other people into that community. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've been able to offer me Jack and like a world really? of support and advice. Okay. And for me, that's, that's really important, right? Because a, a, um, a lot of this stuff that he's going to experience or go through is going to be stuff that isn't my experience. Um, and I also feel like it's just important to to change the narrative, right? So when we talk about, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of a lot of stuff around dads is quite negative. Like oh. we hear a lot oh, of sh- shitty dads yeah, or yeah, absent course. dads, mm-hmm. and it's 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 always black fathers that were at the brunt of that mm-hmm. first and foremost, right? As if all you know, I mean, dads of all races are rubbish. But for me, 
Do you know I mean, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of, I mean, really great black men and great mm. black fathers that are both, um, do you know I mean, really helpful in terms of me and my own personal life, but also um, important into my son's life. So I feel like it's just important to mention that and just to so kind of change that narrative of, um, you know, the, around black fathers. When you say community, so you mean like people in your life or people in like on be his life, or just you mean just a support network for both. you and your son? Both. Yeah. So, you know, it's a support network for me in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, questions that I'm having mm-hmm. as I'm being a dad, but also for him growing up, do you know I mean? And seeing other people around him that look like him and role models, do you know I mean, that are, that are positive black mm-hmm. men and other black fathers, it's important for him to have that and for him to see that. Okay, cool. Thanks for mentioning that. You seem quite level headed and you seem like, it seems like you thought about this a lot. So I guess we look forward to meeting your next child. Yeah, we'll see. Thanks for coming on, Adam. Yeah. I really appreciate it, man. Do socials, anything you want to promote? Any of that stuff? Um, socials, Adam Q A D A N Q G H on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I've got a book coming, but stay tuned. I'll yeah. That later. We're looking forward to it. Thanks again. No cool. Thank you. Is that right, yeah? Yeah, it's good. It's good.